Okay. Noswaithal, good evening everyone and welcome to my uh, Facebook live, my pan ad uh, with Virginia. I've actually got um, I've actually got water tonight but I think my, my lovely guests have actually got um, a, a pan ad, a mug of tea in my office in Hollyhead. Um, before I introduce my guests I just want to give you a bit of a, a run through. We've had a fantastic couple of weeks um, at the Island Games in Guernsey and in Alan. I'd like to say come back here, like, congratulations to all of the athletes and all of those that supported them and all of the Island Games um, organization. They did an absolutely fantastic job and they really did, uh, did do us proud here on the island. Um, we were ninth out of 24 teams. Uh, we got some six gold, seven silver and five uh, bronze. And of course, we'll be hosting the Island Games in 2027, which is not that far away. Now, I've had five Prime Minister's questions uh, so far this year, five. I think I'm probably one of the few MPs that has had so many Prime Minister's questions. And I'm sure you've all seen me bobbing um, up and down every Wednesday at lunchtime. So I'm really, really hoping that I'll have my sixth uh, Prime Minister's question. And I'll be um, giving a big shout out to the um, honest sworn uh, um, Island Games uh, team and all of those and speaking to the Prime Minister about that. Um, I've had a really good morning uh, here. We had the launch of Great British Nuclear and one of my campaigns has been for new nuclear at Wilver uh, since even before the island elected me. I'm going to um, Charles Funneth actually on Friday with a uh, uh, Janet Finch Saunders, who's uh, one of the MSs in the Senate, and we saw um, Kumi Aguino, who are, want to have um, SMRs um, at Transfarnet. I chair the um, APPG, the cross party group for small modular reactors. Uh, so the launch of Great British Nuclear today and the SMR competition was absolutely. Um, really exciting. For me, it was like going to a family wedding, like a nuclear family wedding. And I spoke to the um, Grant Shapps, the Secretary of State uh, for, um, uh, for Energy and Net Zero. We spoke about Wilva. And um, I'll be um, definitely in touch with Gwen, Gwen Parry Jones, who is the new CEO of Great British Nuclear. And she lives on the island. And many of you know her as the CEO of um, Magnox. Um, in terms of the whole sort of nuclear theme, I've got the US Embassy coming to the island uh, next week uh, to talk about nuclear. We've got a, um, a Westinghouse launch at MSpark. And then on the 11th of September, it's Nuclear Week in Westminster. And I've got, I'm hosting lots and lots of events. So if you'd like to come along the week of the 11th of September to any of my events, um, please, do, uh, please do drop me a line and I'll send you details. Um, in terms of free ports, I'd like to uh, say thank you, dropping about to all those that have signed up for my free free port seminar, which is at Mensa Morn this coming Friday, starts at 9.30. Uh, and of course, um, our free port is, is really exciting uh, for the future of the island and hopefully we'll have an economic renaissance. But the start really is now. Um, it should mean 13,000 jobs in the uh, longer term and a billion pounds worth of investment. And um, in terms of this free Freeport seminar, it's open for everybody. It's free if you're a business, if you're an individual that wants to find out more, do come along and listen to the presentation. There'll be good Q&A, great opportunity to, uh, to network. Um, I'd like to give a big shout out to, about, to all of those that came to my, uh, my Coastal Park Clean and Amalok at the weekend on Saturday, particularly uh, to the Delphi Bolts, um, who um, John and Amanda for their free tea and coffee and all those um, who, who helped uh, do, uh, we've got sacks and sacks of rubbish actually, so that was, that was great. And then also on Saturday, I went to the, um, uh, to the morning, I went to the, uh, the Folk on the Farm Festival and Rob Carter gave me a really good CV, I had, a, I had an absolutely brilliant time. Um, their CD is called Naughty Dog uh, and def definitely well worth um, a listen. And then I went to the RNLI, they had a strawberry tea at the Trail Bay Hotel. It's been running by the lot for the last 17 years and set up by Heather Abbott from the Ladies Guild. And uh, I'd like to thank the Trail Bay Hotel and Roy Files, who's my guest, and uh, Casey Jones for uh, his, his music. There is some lots of opportunities over the summer to support our fantastic RNLI. Um, I think we've got the Trial the Bay RNLI Day is the 20th of August, and there's lots of other events in, in Bramaris and, and Chemison and Holyhead all over the island. 
Um, in terms of businesses, really keen to showcase how our businesses are punching above their weight in terms of delivering net zero. And I've been going around meeting a lot of the, co the companies that have benefited from the 2.7 million we've had from the Community Renewal Fund, um, a grant, and working with um, Chandrina Menai and also with the Greener Edge. And one of the businesses uh, was based in Star, um, John Kelly Construction. And uh, a lot of these businesses I'm going to invite here to Westminster. I've got Anglesey Day on Wednesday, the 22nd of November. Um, they're all going to have a stall and really um, demonstrate to um, all of the MPs and, and uh, the Secretary of State. And, and a lot of constituents are coming from Anglesey as well. Um, so if you're a company that would love to, uh, would like me to come along over the summer, then please do, uh, do get in touch. Um, so now it's, it gives me absolute pleasure to introduce uh, one of my favourite people on the island, uh, Wynn. Um, and um, I've got very happy memories last summer. I said to Wynn I wanted to um, drive a combine harvester and kindly Wynn, uh, he, he let me into his combine harvester at Brian Bounds Farm. And it was one of the highlights of my, uh, my time so far as being an MP. And he also, um, he also um, got me to shear a sheep and I was wearing white trousers and it was really, really hard to hold the sheep still. But um, when perhaps you'd like to introduce yourself, I mean, I think a lot of um, people know you as Wynne Penryn and your role in terms of um, the farming community on Honest Morn and also uh, your role. And then um, perhaps Alan could introduce himself as, uh, as well. So over to you, Wynne. Uh, thank you. Um, yeah, I'm Wynne Williams, Penryn Farm, uh, Shanbora on Anglesey. I'm the show president for the Anglesey show this year. And with me is Aled Roberts, who is the show chairman for this year. Excellent. And then how did you how did you get involved with the Anglesey show then, Wynne? Um, well, 40 years ago, I started um, stewarding. Uh, in the beef section. Um, so you're about five, you're about five then, were you? I was, yeah, four, I think. <laughs> um, and uh, it's grown from there. Um, got onto the show committee and been on it more or less since then. And how did you get involved, Aled? Uh, going back nearly twenty years now, I started showing cattle. Um, at the Anglesey show and then ever since then just been involved in attending some meetings and stuff and on the council. So that's one of the things I love about the show when you go around it's, it's, you see sort of generations and, and you know young people taking their, uh, their their prize animals around the ring where you're smartly wearing those white coats some of the coats are a bit too big and they uh, they just look so so proud and it really is a whole sort of a whole uh, family family event. So tell us about the um, you know, over the last forty years. Win, how has the show changed? Has it? Um, has it? You know, a, a, what's what's different? Uh, what's different? Um, the rules and regulations that we have to abide by um, to host the show, which absolutely cost a fortune, um, but but we have to tick every box, um, every question that's asked by by the council and by the trading standards uh these things have to be adhered to um so uh, apart from that there's very little changed it's still you know predominantly agriculture um the the trade stands probably have increased over the last 40 years um and uh you know the, the fun fair is, is that's been going on for for thirty years, I suppose. Um, yeah. And how do you how do you and Aled split? Aled, how do you split the role with Win? How do you what are you got different roles? Um, not much difference really. We both of us we attend the meetings at the show and try and sort problems out and give out suggestions how to change things and do, how to to simplify things as well and Alad, how many people are actually how many people are volunteers and how many sort of paid staff do you have it's not many paid staff actually is it it's, it's no. largely it's, yeah mostly of the work is voluntary yeah and i mean how many when does it sort of ramp up are you sort of starting booking things is it january is it i mean how many i mean for example now you're really sort of going into the show season how many hours a week are you working on it Alad? um I'd say there's two or three meetings every week held mm -hmm. at an Anglesey show, 
um, myself, I'll be at the show every two weeks. And how do you how do you fit in it with your normal sort of your normal job? And I'm particularly like August when that's a really busy time for you, isn't it? At the end of August. Yeah, yeah. Um, we tend to have the meetings in the evening, which is a help. Uh, and we tend to go there in the evenings as well to help clear up and trim and paint and do all sorts of jobs that need doing. Um, there's a good team of, you know, 15, 20 hardworking volunteers. That's predominantly are running the show with uh, one, one girl uh, paid, uh, the secretary kind. Which, yeah, uh, is... I have a brilliant job, absolutely mm. brilliant. And are you, are you recruiting at the moment? I saw, I think I saw an advert for somebody, um, uh, a, a sort of a clerical assistant. Are you still recruiting? Yeah, we're, we're looking for an assistant for, for kind. And what sort of person are you looking for? What sort of what does that person look like? Oh, um, <laughs> multitask. <laughs> um, that has to be good with uh, people, has to be good um, with the IT, has to be have a, a little knowledge of agriculture, uh, have a little knowledge of um, different um, activities that need uh, booking in and looking after on the show ground. Uh, it's not just the show, that's the, the income in the show nowadays. Uh, we, we went to the field out and the sheds out to all sorts of different activities um, everything needs to be uh, booked in and rubber stamped and checked and uh, you know there's a lot of work booking these different activities in so if someone wants uh, is interested in the job and they want to find out more who should they contact um well contact the show office and yeah. uh, um speak to kine or ellen uh, or end it um, in, in the office. Okay, brilliant. And then I don't want you to give any like secrets away, but where do you where do you make your most of your money? Is it on the ticketing? Is it on the trade stands? Is it on the um, people signing up for sponsorship? Is it on the you know people entering the the craft you know the craft um, uh, some of the craft competitions? What 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 is it largely? Oh, the, the biggest income would be ticket sales. Mm -hmm. um, the second biggest income would be sponsorship. Right. The third uh, biggest income would be entries. Yeah. Okay. And the and so in terms of ticket sales, then. So I know, Ale, do you want to talk about the competition you've got on your Facebook page at the moment? Where you tag, you've got to tag, you've got to tag like three people on the show on Facebook page, and then your name goes into the hat to win a couple of, a couple of um, tickets for free. So I think that's really good. Anybody listening, if you haven't actually um, tagged three friends, it's a great opportunity because you might win, might win a couple of tickets. And so the, in terms of tickets, a win. So under fives are free. Yeah, fifteen to five to fifteen is four pounds, and over sixteen is eighteen pounds. And you can also get um, family. Uh, family tickets and you're trying to encourage people to buy tickets now is that correct you get a bit of a discount don't you yes if you buy online early there's a, a discount and so that's we're looking at the 15th and 16th of august yeah and it's eight till eight till five yes uh yes um later than five um we've got the coat which is the entertainment area with uh, a lot of uh, local um, bands um, entertaining us all day, and that's running till eight o'clock at night. Uh, there's a bar next door to it, so um, if the weather will be kind, it, it'll be a good evening. Um, it was quite successful last year, and we've uh, carried it on this year. No, it was great. It was so hot last year, wasn't it? It was amazing. It was just brilliant weather. It couldn't have been better. It really, uh, really couldn't have been uh, couldn't have been better. And so, um, in terms of the so all the um the people have entered um that the it's it's closed for people um entering for animals, isn't it? Cattle and things like that. That's closed, correct? Correct. 
Yeah, that's fair. So is there anything that's open at the moment that people, or is it just the tickets now? It's it's just the ticket sales now. Um, okay. um, we, we, we have taken one or two late entries in the capital section for right. different reasons, mostly being with TB, um, but uh, no, the, the, the entries have closed. So talk about that a bit. So are you, are you, you know, the whole, the way the TBs might have affected people traveling a long way and also the whole sort of avian flu? Yeah, well, it's, it's definitely an issue, um, a big issue. Some people are very apprehensive to, to bring people to a show. Um, and then the people that do want to come to the show, they have to TB test, the pre movement test um, by their vet, which costs um, quite a lot of money. Um, it, 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 it's, it's no help for, for the show, um, the, the situation, but it's, it's something that everybody in the country has to, has to do. Yeah. Okay, great. Um, so we've got some questions um, coming through. Make it your business on a small, says uh, Northwest um, Dart. Thank you. Good evening. Um, great news on Great British Nucleus. Thank you. Um, uh, Kenneth Chellis Jones, uh, one of my uh, regulars, says, Hi, Virginia. Thanks for the letter. He will answer. Looking forward to that. Um, and Trish, Trish Marshall says, uh, not, not so I thought, every time you come to Amlock, I seem to be at a craft fair. Um, she'd like to ask, how much is a table to hire for selling crafts? As I used to be used to be able to hire a table from Nigel Rose at Showmore. How much is how much is it for a, a craft table? Um, it depends on where you want to be, um, outside or, or inside. I think the outside tables, the cheapest ones were £120, and the inside table ones are, I think, £250. Okay, so that, that's, and that's for the two days, yes? That's right. Yeah. And um, Emma, Emma Louise Jones says, what's being done to improve the light horse section? Is that the bit behind the sheds? Is that was that the that area? Or was it in the ring? Um, yeah, the the the, the back rings. Um, well, we've got a, a couple of very enthusiastic um, stewards on board. They they helped us for the first time last year. Mm -hmm. uh, they 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 are back this year and they've tweaked one or two of the classes. Um, hopefully for for the better. Um, uh -huh. You know. After COVID, um, the the show started from with a new page and uh, new stewards in in most sections, especially the horse section. Um, and it's not been easy. Um, we're still learning and we're, we're still making a few mistakes, I suppose. But uh, we're trying to rectify them for the following year. Um, but. Uh, you know, the, the, the ladies in charge are, are very keen and um, they're trying their best. Okay, no, that's, that's good. Um, we've got a question here uh, from Fred, Frederica John. She said, I can't take part, I'm about to go into a talk. Only one question, what can be done to keep agricultural land from being absorbed by solar farms? What are your thoughts on solar? Um, well, yes, very good points. Um, I, I'm totally against. Uh, these solar farms um, everywhere on Anglesey. There, there are a few big solar farms uh, up and running now, uh, which I suppose it, it's fine having a few, but I, I definitely wouldn't like to see any more um, large solar farms on, on Anglesey. Uh, we, we seem to be um, full of windmills and solar farms yeah. already. The wind, we've got that light source BP one, which is going to be around around here, isn't it? That, that one's going to be, that is going to be really, really uh, large, the light source BP one. That one's so large, it's actually Welsh Government that's leading on that. It, they're, they're normally, um, it's normally, planning's obviously normally council led, but because that one's so large, that's, that is going to be, um, uh, um, I think that that's the Welsh Government one. Um, uh, Kelvin Furlong says, any ministers coming to the show? Great question, Kelvin. I've been speaking to Mark Spencer, the farming minister, about him coming. Also uh, to Therese Coffey, the Secretary of State for, um, for DEFRA, 
who is um, on, the, on the TV now, actually, in the, in the in the chamber. She actually comes to Anglesey quite a lot um, to, to visit. So hopefully we might get one, one of those. I've actually got uh, the transport minister coming um, in early August. He's my 18th minister to the island. I've had 18 ministers and two prime ministers. And I'm going to take him to um, T. Croix. Do you know that um, that platform there, um, Ale? T. Croix, it's... it's um, there's a, a big gap between the platform and actually getting up on the train. It's a massive issue for sort of, you know, local people with um, mobility issues. Have you been to that one? No, I haven't been there. Uh, no. He's going to come and have a look at that. And then he's also going to hopefully meet with the Line Amalok and the, the Long Last um, groups as well. And then also meet some of the train drivers, because obviously we've got the train drivers headquarters now in Holyhead. And what, what are your, both your views on Line Amalok and Long Last? Go on, Aled. Yeah, it's very important that we make good use of it. Um, I think it's important that they reopen it. It might bring more things to Amloch, um, especially places on the way as well. Yeah, no, absolutely. And and what are you thinking about it being trains or or multi or do you just do you just want it to be used? Yeah, well, first thing for it to be used whichever way. Yeah. What about you, Win? Yeah, I agree. Um, Maybe having a train line, it's a bit difficult, but definitely have a cycle route and a, and a walk, uh, yeah. a, foot, a footpath. Um, it goes through, you know, outstanding uh, scenery. Um, it's a pity it's not used, and I, and I hope hope things get sorted that it will be used. Yeah, no, absolutely. I think that, unfortunately, there's not room for both. It's just not not wide enough. It's not safe. And the, re the reality is... Um, the line amlock the train people have got the they've got the 99 year lease that was granted to them in april 2021 uh, so they've actually got the lease for the track um and um so uh, the, uh, at the end of the day they've, they've they've got the lease for the track that's that's the reality um so i think it's some um, uh, you know it, as, as you say it's a huge community asset and um 17 uh, miles of, um, of, of track going through the island and I think it's really important that we do actually um, get that back into back into use right so we've got some more questions so I think you had a question win about horses didn't you um, let's have a look at that so it said um, from Steve Barber he said good morning good, good morning I have a question regarding Anglesey show the horse section doesn't have any qualifying classes and entry fee is high at 15 pounds a class the show never used to be like this as a horse owner a show them i could go to smaller local shows with qualifying classes for half the cost can you explain why they understand over and also um the cost of living for competitors this is taken into account um, many competitors miss out on anglesey and compete at the flint show such a shame it's on our doorstep any thoughts on that yes um uh yeah the the prices were set last year uh, for for the classes for the entries. Um, in the meantime, the, the cost of living has exploded. Um, but I don't think we're we're way way off the mark. Um, we've had twenty percent more horses entered this year than last year. Um, yeah. You have to remember when we the gang that's running the show now took over after COVID. The show was losing between forty and fifty thousand pounds every wow. year. Wow! And, and um, a lot of, of things had to be changed and uh, looked at. Um, one of the sections that was hemorrhaging uh, the most money was the the horse section. So mm -hmm. unfortunately, we had to increase the entry fee, and right. um, yeah, it's just part and parcel unfortunately of, of running the show yeah and um, trish marshall says thanks for answering when um it, she's looking to have a stall inside she'll have a think about it victoria roberts the lovely victoria roberts um says wishing win and all the team the best of luck for the show and she urges everyone to support this show buy the tickets visit the show and support agriculture on anglesey now <laughs> That bell shows you that we are live and I, uh, I'm i voting. Now, um, we, I've got eight minutes to get to the chamber, so I can probably do another, uh, Beth and I can probably do another three minutes and then we'll probably end. Um, and um, uh, Jean Baker says, how much are you paying for traffic parking control? Rotary have done it for several years at 4,000 for the two days. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. 
good question. Um, I, I'm not at liberty to be um, sharing sharing the contract. <laughs> she might now. be offering to do the discount, Win. <laughs> no, no. Thank, you know, uh, we're very grateful for the Rotary for helping us out for the for the last um, number of years. Fair play to them. Um, we, we're just trying trying an, another system this year and using uh, a firm that we we have to pay um a bit more but uh, not, yeah. not huge hugely more expensive um we're just trying different things to, to, to get things to work okay. a little bit better no that's fair enough and kenneth chalice jones says t Royce has always been like that the portal there used to have sets he took to help people yep kenneth there are still steps there um felicity um elpit says she loves the diversity of talent at the show the chickens the goats the plants the crafts the sheep it's the highlight of the year for me great so uh, felicity i look forward to seeing you there i'm going to be there for um both days I'm, i've got a, a, a brand new tent actually that um and i'm really 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 looking forward to being at the show emma louise jones says why is the agm for the show held after the decision to be made in october as a member i wasn't invited to any of the committee meetings how can we help make a change if we aren't invited that might be one that I'll leave for you to take offline with, <laughs> or unless well, you want to answer that now. Um, everybody that's a member um, has has a yearly book, and, okay. it, and it gives last year's um, uh, points and the dates of next year's ATM. Okay. Um, anybody that's a member is more than welcome to come along. Okay, great. Um, G. Beg says, uh, Diokwin, thank you for the answer there. Um, so, if people do want to volunteer, um, Aled, how do they how do they get involved? How do they what sort of um, what sort of roles are there? Can they help with parking? What, what can they help with? Yeah, they can help us out with all sorts of stuff. Um, maybe firstly, they could contact the show if they're willing to do some voluntary work for the show, and um, yeah, just have a word with Kind or whoever's in the office. Thank you. And what's um, when, um uh, Aled, What's the sort of like disabled for people with disabilities? What's the sort of disabled access like? Yeah, we we're, we're targeting all sorts of um, disabled access to everywhere, no matter where you want to go on the showground. There's um, access to disability. Great, brilliant, brilliant. Oh, well, I better go and vote now. But I just like to end by saying, Jeff and Val, thank you so much, both of you. It's been an absolute treat to have you as my guests here. And thank you to all of those that have sent in questions and have been on the, the Facebook Live. And, and hopefully my team in my office have looked after you. Uh, well, my office in uh, in Hollyhead. Um, I'm going to have a bit of a break over the, the, the summer and I'll be back on the island uh, tomorrow. Um, although it's recess, I don't stop. I have a reputation. I think it's win. You said I have a reputation for working hard, for being very approachable and really um, championing the island. So I've got the US Embassy coming uh, to the island. I've got companies like uh, Korean companies like Kepco who want to invest in nuclear. I've got ministers like Hugh Merriman who I mentioned. Um, I'm going to be lots of carnivals, the Chemice Carnival, lots of dog shows, Plastland Vira and Vermaris. Lots of RNLI funding, seeing lots of businesses like Red Rope Ice Cream, obviously doing the Anglesey show. And then I've also got surgeries. And I'm really, really hoping to catch up with my family and uh, my lovely dog that had a terrible, terrible accident um, a few weeks ago. So I've got to do some physiotherapy uh, with her and try and get her swimming. Um, so my next Facebook Live will be Tuesday, the 5th of September. And I've actually got Sam Rowlands, who is um, honest morning is represented by five MSs in the Senate um, and one MP. And uh, one of those five MSs is Sam Rowlands, and he is going to be uh, my guest on Tuesday, the 5th of, uh, 5th of September. But I'd like to say just um, thank you, everybody. It's been an absolute treat to um, spend uh, this evening with you. And um, I hopefully I'll see many of you over the next few weeks on the island. If you see me, do please come up, um, help me with my Welsh, come and say hi. And uh, really, I um, hope everybody has an absolutely fantastic summer. So, um, Alan and Wynne, I look forward to seeing you on the 15th and 16th of August and hopefully before. Take care. Jock and bow.